Thanks to new tools like AI Gaussian splatting and image generators, it's now much easier to build interactive scenes to test drive designs from simple concept images. Being able to move around your designs in 3D is much more powerful than static AI images, particularly when combined with games engines like Unreal Engine. For those of you who are new to the world of Gaussian splatting, they are essentially 3D points with a matching Gaussian distribution that defines the size, shape, and opacity in a space. In other words, instead of rendering polygons or voxels, the scene is represented by thousands or millions of these splats, which allows real-time rendering of complex scenes without heavy mesh processing. And when combined with quick AI generations, the potential is incredible. These can also be produced from images, videos, and panoramas, which I'll be showing you how to do. Midjourney is particularly great for concept and imaginative image generations, so I'll be using that. But for more accurate or technical images, you could use Flux and add reference inputs and sketches to base on. I'm going for a biophilic interior space with organic architecture. Either generate these images with a wide aspect ratio to get the most detail, or you can create a full panoramic view to cover all the angles. You can also have multiple views of the space, but you can use all these as references to make the 3D. Midjourney does have a tiling function which could be used, and there are other 360 image generators out there, such as Skybox or 360 Laws, which could be used with Flux. You can also upscale and then enhance the details before 3D processing on something like Topaz Labs, which is the easy way to refine and enhance details. Once you have the input image, you'll need to go over to Marble World Labs for your immersive world generation. It is incredible for transforming all types of images into Gaussian splats, which you can move around in. There are limitations to these Gaussian spats, so it's good to follow the guides to get the best results, which you can find from the official site, or look at the previous video which I explained how to get the best scenes. With the free plan, you can generate four free worlds, or you can try out the Pro, which is currently on offer for $1. In the latest version, there's even a 3D input option in beta, which lets you create volumes in 3D space, describe what each volume represents, and then generate from them. Interesting concept to try out. But what we want is the 2D input. So drag and drop in your image, or you can add up to eight reference images, or put in your panorama, and hit create. If you select the advanced option, it will allow you to edit the scene to refine it a few iterations before the full generation. So after five minutes, what you get is an initial panorama, where at the top you can edit it to give more descriptions or images. But if you are happy with the result, you can press create world on the bottom right. After another 5 minutes, you'll have a full walkable 3D world. It is quite incredible, the visual consistency of the organic architecture. I chose a rather abstract interior, so you can see strange elements such as staircases going into bookcases and so on. And there are other artifacts as you move further away from the center. However, it is incredibly impressive just for one concept image. And if you have a complete panorama on multiple images from different views, you can control the space much more effectively. From here on, you've got a range of export options, which even includes high quality meshes, but what we want are the splat PLY files. You can also keep generating and changing text, adding images, and each time you'll get a different variation. Cleaner interior images with sharp contrast also give better generations, so keep trying these out. Next is the fun part of bringing this to life in Unreal Engine. For this, you need a Gaussian splat importer. There are a couple out there, but by far one of the easiest and highest quality ones is by Volinga. This plugin is designed for virtual production and has advanced light editing, so it's excellent in quality, with a variety of editing tools available. There's a trial version of this plugin, so just download which version you acquire, and then you need to paste this plugin into your main Unreal Engine directory under Engine, Plugins, and Marketplace. I'll load up an empty first person template. And under Edit, Plugins, search for Volinga. You need to add this and restart. Note that both trial and paid versions, you will need to generate a license. This is done by getting your hash code from your Unreal Engine settings to generate a license from the Volinga website, which you then add to the plugin. You can find all the instructions in the Volinga docs, but it is quite straightforward on where to find and paste in. Once activated, you can bring any PLY file in. I recommend making a folder called PLY or Gaussian Splat in your content folder and dropping all of the files there. 
If you have Unreal Engine open, an import option will pop up in the corner. Just select import to accept. Once processed, you can see in the Explorer, there are all these files. And they've all been automatically converted from PLY files to usable Unreal assets. You can just simply drag and drop any of these into the center and you will have your splat rendered. At first, you'll get this very unsightly blob, which you'll think is completely unusable. However, deep down in the middle is the interior scene that we want. To make it a bit more manageable, you can actually crop out these external massing. There is a handy cropping feature already built within this actor. If you select the spat, pull up the detail panel. In the drop down under the main actor, under the scene, there is a crop volume. You can click on that, and if you enable the crop, it will remove everything outside the box. So you can scale this box and move it to the position, and then you'll cut everything else out. Once that is sorted, you can just move directly inside the splat, where now you can finally see the world that we generated back in Marvel World Labs. Now, one of the most powerful features of the Volinga plugin is the ability to entirely relight your Gaussian splats. We have a day scene here with windows, but if it was an enclosed room at nighttime, you could take off all the lights and relight certain areas. To control the lighting, press this blue Volinga plugin button up in the middle here. There are detailed ways to change how much the scene affects the splat, but the main thing you need to change is the ambient light. You can bring that down to 0 0.1 and the scene will become very dark. Now, if you bring in any point light or spotlight, you'll see how it relights your splat. You can control the intensity, change the colors, and affects all of the surrounding. Pretty cool. Obviously, we don't want a night scene since our original image was a daylight with lighting baked in already. However, if you do want to light your scenes on your engine, Next time you can generate an image with no daylight and light streaks. Since I have selected a first person template, I have a first person actor here. However, if I hit play, it will fall through the floor as there are no collisions. You can actually download the meshes directly for Marble World Apps as there is an option there. I make it invisible and use that just for the collision. Another simple option is to simply put in a primitive like a plane and turn off the visibility. If you bring your player start actor to the center of the room and hit play, you can run around the space like in any video game. Marble Labs has the option to combine splats, so you can even combine multiple rooms or an entire building interior. Certain areas are underdeveloped. But bear in mind that this was generated from one mid-journey concept image, and it is still an incredible way of testing new environments very quickly and showcasing them. I did mention that Marble World Labs doesn't do too well with exterior scenes, but it is still possible. Here's one scene of a lookout structure in a mountainous landscape. The background looks amazing from a distance, but it degrades from certain angles and close up. You could also download a direct mesh, but costs 3,500 credits, and you're better off using another software like Meshy AI if you want to create individual buildings. For scenes like this, you can still clip out the background and add some collisions. And from the distance, you can still have an interesting interactive experience. Another potential use for this is to take the clipping box and just keep the building, which can be then composed into other scenes or environments. But generally, this workflow I would recommend for interiors, especially if you've generated various 360s of interior designs and maybe want AI to test out different styles. This could be an excellent workflow for understanding first person how these spaces would work. And then you could take this into the next level and use it within VR headsets. Be sure to try this out for yourself and I'll see you in the next video.